Hi guys, I've never made a post anywhere on Reddit, but I'm always reading and lurking. I've been reading so much Let's Not Meet stories that it made me want to share mine. I'm sure that the format of this won't be great, but I will try to do my best. So when I was 13, my friend who I'll call Mary had a grandma who ran a nail salon downtown. I grew up in a really, really small town in Alaska. When I was younger, it seemed like a really safe place. As I got older, I began to realize how corrupt and horrible it actually was, but at 13, I still wasn't totally aware of that. After school, Mary and I would always walk to her grandma's nail salon. It was in a building with a few other shops, and we would kind of just hang out and browse. There was a Thai restaurant that was our favorite ever, and we'd eat there a lot too, and we're pretty good friends with the restaurant owners. After some months of the same routine, just hanging out every day, caused me and Mary's family to become like family. Her grandmother, who we'll call Gretcha, had the idea of wanting to open a little coffee stand in there. The other shops were a cookware store, a clothes store, and a game shop, and a couple of other random ones that I don't remember. So we figured it would have been a nice business, and she wanted Mary and I to work the coffee stand while she was at the nail salon. I also believe that was partly because she wanted us to get out of her hair. Anyways, we went and trained properly, but since we were 13, we were being paid under the table. We had a set up right in front of the Thai restaurant. After about a week of the coffee stand being up and running, this guy who looked about 18 to 20 years old would begin to show up quite frequently. He would get a small vanilla latte every day and sit in the mall and kind of watch us work, but also browse around the game shop. So we just kind of thought maybe he lived nearby and liked to come there every day. And maybe we hadn't noticed him because he obviously wouldn't be coming to get his nails done. He honestly looked kind of dirty and like he didn't care that much though. When the months got hotter, we started walking home instead of her mom driving us. There were a lot of kids walking around, so I didn't notice very much if people were behind me or in front of me. One of the nights we closed up shop a little late. It was about 9pm, which in Alaska is still fully sunny. And I noticed that someone was walking behind me kind of close. I stopped it dead in my tracks and didn't hear anything, so I kept walking, and I was sure I heard it this time, and I turned around, and there he was, the same guy that is in the mall every day, following me. I was 13 and shy, so I just kept walking, and made a loop around, and just walked to the mayor's office, because the police station was too far. I called my dad from there, because I felt safe, and he came and got me. This repeated in slightly different ways for about two weeks, and eventually, I don't know how to this day, he found out where I lived. He would knock on the door, leave flowers, call our home phone, and all kinds of crazy stuff. My dad finally helped me get a restraining order, but it took about a month for anyone to take us seriously and come see him at my workplace, as we had no idea what his name was. Once that was in effect, it stopped for about a week, and then he of course started showing up again. He continued stalking my home and even hanging out by the fence at my school when school was back in session. Finally I had enough. I moved in with my mom because she was frankly a better parent to me and taking it way more seriously. She lived so far out that I couldn't walk anywhere and she had no electricity or running water, but I didn't care anymore. I felt so much safer and so much more loved. I quit that job and I took the bus every day. Eventually, he just disappeared and I never heard anything about him again. Either way, I hope I never have to see him again. Trigger warning, mentions of infant death. Hi, I'm back with another story because I remembered something that happened at my first job. I'm on mobile, so sorry for any formatting issues or spelling or anything else. It was about August 17th when I was hired for my first job. To be honest, I would have gotten my first job sooner, but I spent the summer with relatives in Ohio, so I decided I'd do it the minute I got back. My first job was at a very popular chain Mexican food restaurant located to a very popular chain coffee shop and a chain sub restaurant. For a first job, it wasn't bad. I paid more than minimum wage, and I liked most of my coworkers. Most. When I was hired, there was an orientation that lasted a couple of weeks. This restaurant was opening for the first time in the city, and we're the original hires. So unrelevant to the story is my coworker Nicole. She didn't seem off to me. She was pretty normal. She was a laid-back mixed girl that had short hair and really deep-set eyes and dark eye bangs. 
I sat next to her during orientation, but she was pretty funny, so nothing made me think red flags. A month or two passes, and you can assume not everybody stuck. Life happened and we lost a few of our coworkers. Nothing out of the normal. It was closing time and I was putting away salsa, when I realized she hadn't been to work in a while. So I turned to my coworker scrubbing the grill and asked him about it. Oh, hey, didn't you know? Jeez, you really are out of the loop, huh? Well, Nicole got arrested because her boyfriend found her dead newborn in a duffel bag under their house. We're not supposed to talk about it, though, so don't bring it up again. I was in complete shock and decided to Google Nicole, last name, newborn duffel bag. When I got home, sure enough, there was a bunch of articles about it. They described how Nicole lied about abortions she had years prior, and she just gave birth in a bathtub, and immediately following birth, she killed her son by drowning him. She then placed the dead newborn in a duffel bag and just hid it under the house. Her boyfriend went under the house years later to find the corpse, then immediately called the police since they were apparently on and off. He didn't know that she was pregnant. So, uh, hey, Nicole, I know you won't get out for at least 12 years, but let's never meet again. I've been on Reddit for a while now and I figured I'd go ahead and post this story. To get this straight, I haven't thought about this in a long time. I pushed it out of my mind, but there are nights like these where I just have to get it out. Anyways, I was 17 at the time, on the way to being 18, and I landed my first job at the mail sorting place, thanks to my neighbor. Back then, they paid around 7 dollars an hour. It wasn't the biggest, but it wasn't the worst. All I had to do was fill out a few pieces of paper and I got the job. No interview either. They loved my neighbor and the guy who hired me was really cool. I called him dad. First day of work, I met a girl named Jennifer. She was at least several months pregnant and basically took me through the entire flat, showed me how things work, instructed me on how to sort and the best way to do it. It was really boring work, so she kept talking to me and we hit it off pretty well. I was borderline recluse. I think she kind of knew that. I was raising children and around pregnant people all the time, so I was able to talk to her about my experiences and how I felt about doing that sort of stuff. We had another cool boss named Jerome, and on my first day, we all piled in his car and he took me home. It was then I realized that I was desperately in need of a car or someone to come pick me up to work because I was going to work late hours, as per the schedule. Yes, it was illegal for me to work those hours, but I digress. My birthday rolled around, and I was getting friendly and finally being open with most of the people there. I learned the ropes really well, even worked in departments that needed more help, because I usually was done earlier than I needed. People actually took me to lunch and brought me things back. Sometimes, I'd buy people something to eat when they were down on their luck. It was like a little family, but I didn't know how much. Jerome worked with his wife, but I can't remember her name. She was the sister of Jennifer, which, in turn, made Jennifer a sister-in-law to Jerome. Jerome's cousin soon started working there, and time and time again he tried to get my number, knowing full well I was underage at the time. I resisted because he wasn't my type, and he was already married. I found him disgusting, but we were all pretty much a cold group of coworkers that hung out a lot. A few months passed, I turned 18, Valentine's Day rolled around, and we all decided to go out for drinks. I wasn't much of a drinker and I knew it was illegal, but I went anyways and had fun. Got drunk as hell too. Jenny had her baby and she went out on the prowl looking for a guy. So I found one that she was actually kindly to and I exchanged numbers for them. We all danced, went to Denny's. They walked me to the door and made sure I was safe and sound. Possibly a week or two later, Jenny didn't show up to work. She wasn't answering her phone or returning phone calls or messages. It was like she dropped off the face of the earth. Jerome, her sister, his wife, and one of the managers, this is all what I heard, decided to go to her house and check on her. When they did, they found her dead. She was laying on her bed, throat slit, the baby strangled and dumped in the laundry bin. When we found out, everybody was heartbroken. It was bad. The police came in and questioned everyone. They pulled me aside last and showed me a bunch of pictures, questioned me about the night we went out drinking harassed me to the point of crying about the entire thing. They had to call my sister to come pick me up from work because I couldn't handle the rest of the day. 
Thanks to my sister and everyone close to me that I talked to about the situation, word got out around my high school that I set Jenny up with a murderer. A week or so after the questioning, Jerome came up to me to vent, which was highly unusual, saying that the guy I hooked her up with wanted to move in with her, etc. Just basically getting angry about it all. I understood his anger, because that was his sister-in-law, but I didn't know why he wanted to tell me about it. Then he asked if I had a ride home, and I really didn't. I was going to walk, so I told him no. He said he'd take me home, and we'd talk about it later. I really didn't think much of it. That night, work was ending, and everyone was filtering out. I got into the car with Jerome, but turns out his car wouldn't start, so we had to get a ride from another coworker, and all was well. A few days after that, Dad came up to us and gathered us around, and told us Jerome was arrested for the murder of Jenny. Apparently, he slept with Jenny and got in her pregnant. She refused to have an abortion, deciding to keep the child, which would add to his two that he already had with his sister. She wanted to name him so she could get benefits, but he didn't agree with it. So he went to the car to leave, but then came back and killed her and the baby. One of the workers there started to scream and yell at me for getting into the car with him, saying that he planned to kill her because she knew that he was the baby's father, and he was going to kill me because he thought I knew. I really didn't. I was in total shock. Dad pulled me to the side and gave me a hug. I was allowed to go back to work after a little break. Things pretty much went downhill after that. Jerome's cousin kept pleading his innocence, while saying that he misses us and he did no wrong. His attorneys cooked up a defense saying that some guys in a black suburban made him do it. It was just so damn weird. I couldn't work there anymore. I got out of there as fast as I could. It pretty much fucked me up until this day. Anyways, that's how my first job went. I recently went to look up news articles for this story and I googled his name. He had a pen pal profile up and it made me sick to my stomach. So please forgive the way I told this story. I haven't slept yet and I doubt I will tonight.